Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English summary, a just and a translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamaru Zaman Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Wednesday morning after the Ishraq Salat, 24th of Zul Hijjah, 1442, corresponding with the English date, 4th of August, 2021. Wa al zamahum kalimat al taqwa wa kanu ahqa biha wa ahlaha. Now. Hazrat Wala Dhamad Barakatum is saying, I spoke about this already, the initial part of it, about the Qabr, etc. And yesterday extensively and for a long time we spoke about Akhirat and uh, Qabr. Uh, this, the Khulasa of it, I have mentioned here. Hazrat uh, Marashah Shah Wasiyullah Sahib taught us all these kitabs, taught it to us, Sabak. Mihajul Abidin, and then the list goes on. And with what ihtimam he used to teach us this year. And his, that fervor and that desire was that how could this be created in my people? Now what can I say? Has this been created within us or not? But this talimat is for all, for the old and for the young. We should all keep it in our minds, in the front of our hearts and in our minds. Now we continue. Yawma nahshuru al-muttaqina ila ar-Rahmani wafda. The ayat of the Quran, the day when we shall gather together those with taqwa unto ar-Rahman as invited guests. As invited guests. That we would gather together we would gather together the day, the day of Qiyamah, when we shall gather those with taqwa unto our Rahman as invited guests. وَنَسُوقُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ وِرْدًا And we will drag the criminals, the kuffar and the sinners to Jahannam thirsty. To Jahannam thirsty. Now Allah Ta'ala speaks in the Quran so much about the Mun'ameen, the favored ones, and the Mujrimin, those uh, who are the criminals. Hazrat Shah Waliullah writes so much about this that Allah Ta'ala explained it in such detail, such detail and has put everything in front of us so that no excuse will ever remain after that. You know we recite Al-Quran but is it sufficient? Is it enough? We need to go and understand the Quran, go through the tarjuma as, as well. I'm not just talking about the layman, the ulama as well. But when all this is established, everything is put in front of us about Jannat, Jahannam, the Akhirat. Then what excuse do we have? لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَا So then can be destroyed and go to destruction whoever destroys himself. But this will be ala bayina. It will be upon a proof that everything was in front of you. You chose the wrong path and this is what it led you to. Now what beautiful ta'limat this is. A person will come out from his cover, and when he come out from his cover, there will be a conveyance next to him and that would be the burak. When he just comes out from his cover, the burak will be next to him on his head. And a, 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 a crown of nur would be placed. He would be made to wear the best of clothes. He will sit on the burak and he will be taken in such honor to Jannah. Such ikram. He will not be asked to walk. He will not be asked to walk. You know, sometimes we say in this dunya that the car is here, uh, gari agai, motor agai, uh, we can sit, etc. Here yeah, the burak will be there. And then the other person will come out from his gra grave. He will be fastened with chains and then he would be dragged face down and he would be thrown then headlong into Jahannam. Na'udhu billahi min We seek refuge in Allah against his anger. Some ulama, I have heard from some ulama this Mubarak hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states that on the day of Qiyamah, people will come out from their 
cover. They will come out from their cover. And they would have such conveyances, such conveyances that they would mount, it would be ready for them, and they would be then taken on these conveyances with beautiful wings, green in color, and they would be flown and they would come onto the Medan of Mahshar. And even beyond that, so much so, they would be brought right to the walls of Jannah. The guards of Jannah will look at these people and they would say to one another, who are these people? They will ask them, who are you people? Some people would say, or some of them talking amongst one another, the guards of Jannah would say, maybe these are the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then some Malaika and Farishta would come to them and would ask them, these people, that who are you people? From which Ummah do you come? They would say to them, we come from the Ummah of Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Farishta would ask them then, the angels, what about your Hisab Kitab? Is it done? They would answer that there is no Hisab Kitab for us. The Farishta would then tell, tell them that uh, were your uh, deeds weighed and measured? They would answer in the negative. The, the, the Malaika would then say that, did you get your books of deeds? And they would say again, answer in the negative, no. The Farishta would then say to them, because uh, you have to return because all this year has remained behind. And these people will then say to them, they will say in answer to them, uh, do we have anything with you of Hisab Kitab? And then another narration there's, uh, that, that, that's there, that's present, present that speaks about that they will answer in this manner that in this dunya hum kisi shay ke malik nahi te. We, were not, we, we, we did not really own much in this dunya and we were just we were just in this dunya we did not commit crimes of oppression etc gunas so in our in, in, the, in the dunya we were busy and we involved and engaged ourselves in the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until such a time that we were called here. In all this type of discussion between the angels, the guards of Jannah and these fortunate people, a caller will call out. Itne me koi awaz dene wala awaz dega. The caller will call out that these are my servants and they have spoken the truth. Ikhlas se neki. Meaning that those who carried out their good deeds with ikhlas and sincerity, they would not be asked questions. They would not be asked and interrogated anywhere along the way. Wallahu ta'ala ghafoorur rahim. And Allah ta'ala is most forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. Afa may yulqa fin nar khayrun. Am may yati aminan yawm al qiyama. Is the one who would be flung and hurled into the fire better? Or the one who comes peacefully on the day of Qiyama. So that person who comes on the day of Qiyamah will be honored in such a way when he would be made fearless of all these things that are happening on the day of Qiyamah. He will have no anxiousness, no worry, no gabrahat whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them sukoon, will give them aman, and they would be taken to Jannah. Now, there is a dua. Hum Allah Ta'ala se darkhaas karte hai. We make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ke hume aur tume us and you, all of us, sab ko in nek bakhto mein daakhil kare that He enters us. He makes us from amongst these fortunate people. Or ye Allah Jalla Jalaluhu ke liye koi mushkil nahi. And this is not difficult at all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not difficult at all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is ilm. Have you even heard about this? Have you even read about this? This type of ta'aleem? 
Allahu Akbar. So the Nabi was given the Burak. The Nabi was given Burak. So in the Akhirat, if a Musliman is given Burak, what ta'ajjub is there of this? Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. That will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his slaves. The ulama, only the ulama, those who have true knowledge. What type of knowledge? This type of knowledge that I've just read out to you, the knowledge of the Akhirat, the knowledge of Qabr, the knowledge of Jannah, the knowledge of Jahannam. Marana Abdul Majid Daryabadi, on one occasion, he was one who would talk. He was quite open and free. He, he said to Hazrat Ami, Hazrat, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran and Nabi in the Hadith so much, so much mention has been made about Jannah, Jahannam, Akhirat. But ulama don't speak about this. Hazrat Anwi Rahmatullah instantly replied and said, Yes, that's correct. What you're saying is absolutely correct. Hazrat Shah Waliullah writes, the Malfus and the statement of Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that in the initial stages of Islam, so many ayat came down regarding Jannah and Jahannam. So many ayat came down regarding Jannah so that shock, zeal and enthusiasm could be created in the hearts of the believers so that they would do good deeds. And so much of Jahannam was mentioned so that the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could sink deep down in the hearts of the believers so that they would not commit any sin. So we should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least one time in the day, make this dua, Hazrat Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say, Allahumma inni asaluka al jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. Oh Allah, I ask you for jannah and all those a'mal, may they be physical or verbal, that will take me close to jannah. And wa'udhu bika min nar I seek protection in you against Jahannam. Wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. And all those a'mal, whether they are qawl or amal, physical or verbal, that will take me closer to, jan uh, to, to, to Jahannam. Now, you know what? Even the sagira, we should stay away from it. Because even the sagira is sufficient for us to become destroyed. Like how one subhanallah do not understand it to be insignificant because it is so great and so heavy on the scales. Now this is what you call akhirat, the bayan of the akhirat. And Imam Ghazali was an imam in this field. Let me tell you of Sayyidina Ibrahim bin Adham rahimahullah ta'ala. You know, uh, there are such great waqiyats about him. But let me just quote a few to you now. Let me quote a few to you now and that is that on one occasion people would say that they asked him that what made this big change and brought this revolution in your life and you adopt a life of such saintliness and closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ibadat etc he said this ayat left me restless fariqun fil jannah wa fariqun fil sa'ir that there will be one group in jannah and one group in jahannam that I realized from that point onwards that all this wealth, all this riches, everything here will not be able to help me. Where is the decision going to be? Am I going to be from here or am I going to be from there? What am I going to pave? What path am I going to take? Allahu Akbar. And I became uh, fully engrossed and overwhelmed in that. And this brought this big change in me. And the second... There's another waqiya where he was laying in his palace, in his room, in his apartment, on his luxurious bed or whatever it was in those days and ages. And at that time he hears a sound. Maybe it could have been on the roof, etc. So he said, who is that? And the person says to him, uh, it, it's me. I, I'm looking for my camel. So he says, oh, you fool. Can you be looking for a camel on my roof? On my balcony? Well, can a camel be here on the top of my roof? So he says to him, yes, as foolish as, as I am, that's how foolish you are. Can you, f I am foolish because I'm looking for a camel on top of your roof. 
And can you look for and can you even find Allah in this palace and in all these riches and this and that and the other? It had such an effect on him that was the turning point in his life. Another waqia that was, was quoted about him was that when he went hunting on one occasion and he takes out his his arrow for this uh, buck, this hiran, and he's about to shoot it. And then this, with the kudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supernatural act, this karamat, ma li hadha khulikta, that that particular buck says that you are not created for this. You are not created for this here. You are created for Allah. You're supposed to be searching and hunting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your quest and your thirst and your desire should have been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not for me. Not for me. وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا فَهُورًا وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا فَهُورًا Their Rabb shall give them pure drinks. That will neither be impure, like the wines of this world, nor intoxicating. When enjoying all these bounties, they will be told. That this is the reward. This is your reward. Your efforts, meaning to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world have been appreciated, it is mashkur, it is accepted and these bounties are the token of our appreciation our appreciation in another ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Rabbana akhrijna minha fain udna fa inna zalimun O oh Allah, take us out O oh Allah, remove us from here, from Jahannam. فَإِنْ عُدْنَا Listen, if we repeat, if we disobey you again, then most definitely we would be uh, sinners. قَالَ اخْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُكَلِّمُونَ So, O oh Allah, remove us from here. Remove us from here and return us to the world. If we ever repeat ourselves by doing what we done then in the world, we must then surely be oppressors, sinful and deserving of your punishment. At that time, Allah Ta'ala will say to them, Qala, Allah will say, Ikhsa'u, qal ikhsa'u, fiha wala tukallimun. Remain disgraced, remain cursed in it, in Jahannam. Do not speak to me about being delivered from it. And that is one of the most painful things, something that will shatter the heart to pieces. That when a person is told by his beloved, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't talk to me. You, just don't talk to me, be silent. Don't talk to me. That will be one of the most painful things ever. It comes in the hadith that these people will be in the shakal and in the surat and in the form of dogs going around and barking. Na'udhu billahi ra'ufur rahim. We seek refuge in Allah who is ra'uf, who is most kind, most gracious, most merciful. Min adabihi al-alim for his most, from his most uh, painful punishment. We understand that these two musibats, there can be nothing uh, greater than these type of musibats, these type of calamities, these types of tests, tri trials, tribulations that will come upon a person. One is that jannat ko haat se dena, that, that a person will be giving jannat away uh, with his hands or that he would be taken into jahannam. So when he would be giving jannat away with his hands, to make sabr upon that is something very, very uh, painful. And to go into Jahannam and to, 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 to be able to tolerate the adab of Jahannam, this is even more difficult. This is even more difficult. But, you know, actually, if we look at the two, the more painful one from the two is to remain in Jahannam, to remain in Jahannam. Why? Because Jahannam, whatever it is, it will not come to an end. There will be torture, pain, persecution and punishment. But that's not the only thing. It would not come to an end. 
it would not come to an end rather it would remain abadul abad for eternity forever and forever and forever it is for that reason that isa alayhi salatu wassalam used to say and I, i'll quote the urdu here to you adab daimi ka tadkira darne walon ko dilon ko tukre tukre kar deta hai that the eternal punishment the mention of eternal punishment in front of those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes their hearts and smashes it into pieces smashes their hearts into pieces Allahu Akbar Hazrat Ali rahimahullah ta'ala we used to actually say that and this was the the marifat of Hazrat Ali rahimahullah ta'ala did people even understand who Hazrat Ali rahimahullah is he disguised himself in the form of a student people didn't even recognize him people didn't even know who he is people didn't even know his great excellences and the marifat and the great dollar and wealth that he possessed on one occasion i was writing something and i wrote hakimul umma immediately monan abrahan al haq told me that why did you leave that out how come you left out mujaddidul millat immediately nakir farmaya he corrected me and he said that how come how did you do that do you know who's this personality hakimul umma mujaddidul milla allahu akbar okay let's continue where is it hasan basri rahimahullah ta'ala in front of him when this was mentioned that when the last person would come out from jahannam i mean we know <clears throat> his name would be hanad and he would come out after 1000 years he would come out saying ya hanan ya manan he would come out of jahannam in such a way when hasan basri heard this he wept and he said if only kash hanad me hota if only i was that hanad people were surprised at what he said and he says alas you people don't understand don't you know that one day and one day some day or the other hanad would be taken out of jahannam and what about us me kehta hu khauf wa dar ka ye sara mamla ek usooli baat ki taraf lotta hai and all of this all of this fear the sphere that we see in this waqia of hasan basri rahimahullah ta'ala all returns to one thing just one point ek nukta but this one point let me tell you about it it is something that will break your spine it will cause you to go pale in the face it will shatter your liver and your heart to pieces and it will continue to let those who are crying cry but not only cry tears rather tears of blood what is this one point that will break a person it is that point that marifat ilahi ka chun jana to be snatched away the marifat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be snatched away this is the thing that causes all this type of fear and it causes people to weep and to cry some buzurgan din we hear from them they say that grief is of three categories and if three types one is that type of grief that afflicts a person that have carried out deeds but will it be accepted the second category is this that have committed sins but the grief is this year would i be forgiven or not and the third type of grief is this year that maybe my marifat this recognition this wealth that i have that allah taala has given me that i understand who allah is that that could be snatched away from me that bit could be snatched away from me some people of ikhlas great personalities would actually say that grief all and all of it in reality is just one type of grief that people have this grief and this fear that maybe their marifat would be snatched away from them and this type of grief is so great so great and so overwhelming all other type of griefs and sorrow and worry and pain in front of that is nothing is nothing 
That's why we should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Shah Waliullah's uh, father, Shah Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala, would recite this dua over and over again. And he said, whatever I achieved, it was because of the barakat of this particular dua. Ilahi maqsoode man tu hi wa tu. Oh Allah, my objective, my goal, my maqsad, my maqsood is you and you alone to he you and your pleasure that's what's my objective therefore muhabbat wa ma'rifati khud bide bless me with your love and your muhabbat yesterday we spoke so much about qabr etc alhamdulillah today we spoke about qiyama now let us make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل and we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa taala that this مزمون these articles and these type of subjects they sink deep into our hearts so that shock and enthusiasm for Jannah can be created in our hearts and fear for Dozak and Jahannam can be created in our hearts. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sameeul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawwab al-rahim bi hurmati Sayyidin Nabi al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.